How's it going everybody? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be tackling this render right here, this really cool kind of stepped looking map. So we're going to be making that all with procedural materials. If you want to get this project file you're seeing right here, you can get that in the description for a dollar. Everybody on Patreon, you'll be getting that for free on all three tiers. If you don't know about the Patreon, you get exclusive tutorials, weekly project files for my different studies and things like that. You get speed art videos and breakdowns of different projects, as well as monthly procedural materials. So we have the wood pack, the iridescent pack, the glitch pack, and I just released the metal pack. So you can go get all that in the description. I also show my client work and you get 50% off on my recent release, which is 100 looping animations, all the project files that you can get into and look at and learn from and improve on your motion design. So all of that is in the description. All right, now let's get into this tutorial. All right, so let's open up a blank document here and I'm going to be using cycles for this. Now you can use Eevee. The only thing you can't do um, in Eevee is the actual node displacement. But if you're fine with just having a bump map, that's totally cool. I'm going to be using cycles though. So I'm going to hit shift A. We're going to go ahead and get a plane. I'm going to hit S5 just to scale them up a bit. Control A, apply that scale. And then I'm going to subdivide them really quickly, give them 100 cuts, and then go to the modifiers and add in a subdivision surface modifier. So right over here. So now he's relatively high poly. Let's go ahead and hop on over to shading because that's where everything is going to be happening. So let's click new. Let's get in a color ramp. Now the the goal, his only purpose is to add color to the things that are going to be going on behind that. So just keep that in mind. It won't be affecting the special little node we're going to be using in a minute. So put this color in right there. And in the white portion, pick whatever color you want to be in your scene. So I'm going to go with a nice orange. And so it's going to go from an orange and gradient into a black, which is going to look really cool. Let's get in a noise texture and plug the factor into the color ramp. I'm going to hit Control T and then use the object coordinate. If you don't have the Node Wrangler add-on, Control T won't work. It comes with Blender by default. And then I'm going to bring my detail down to zero. So we need to put in a really interesting node right over here. So what I'm going to do is shift a search and type in map range right here. You're going to want to use the map range and it's very, very similar to a color ramp. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the stop. I mean, stepped linear. So it's a lot similar to a, um, a constant. So, but this is the stepped linear and what that's going to do is you can see it has these hard edges. So if I were to bring my steps up really big, you would go back to like a normal, but what this stepped linear does is it kind of adds um, these hard edges, but it gives it a layered look. So if you do say eight, you have eight layers of a color change. So to really make that, so to really sell that, you're gonna wanna play with the min and max. So right about here, and then you'll play with the max. And then once you see, if you bring that min down, that minimum, so it brings this black portion, then you play with the max, it'll start to bring in those eight different layers of look and then just play with the minimum and maximum until you get something you really like. So this looks like something I want. I'm gonna give it 0.3 on the scale. Um, actually, let's go with uh, one for now. So that's super big. I'm just gonna hold down. Right about there is probably gonna look really cool. Now, you can use this in Eevee. It works just fine. It looks really, really cool. But I want to actually make these layers go in and affect my actual geometry. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit Z, go to the render view, which will give me cycles. I'm gonna hit this to give myself some of those default HDRIs to play with the scene. And I'm gonna bring this guy right down here. And right over here, I'm gonna search displacement. And we're gonna get in a displacement, plug the displacement into the displacement, and then bring that over here and plug the result into the scale. That's not gonna do anything, of course, because we don't have it enabled right now. It's just acting like a bump map. So we need to go to the, the uh, material right down here on settings and then right here on surface go to displacement only and now it's displacing i like how the black portions are at the top and the uh, the lighter portions are at the bottom so i'm just going to hit this and flip my color ramp and then bring in the black portions to give it some more contrast so now we have this it's working just fine what i'm going to do is put my viewport on the subdivision surface at three and make my render at five and that's going to give you a really nice look so now we have this really cool looking thing and of course you can go into the color ramp and add other colors say make a pink so all of this can work together and give you a really cool mappy looking 
um, this, uh, render. And one thing you can do, if I go back here to material view, if you don't like the spark parts that are poking up, you want them to be positioned in different spots, you can take your noise texture and go to 4D. And then you can use the W and sort of move them around. So you're not messing with the scale, it's staying at the same, but you're just sort of randomizing what things look like. And then you can go back to the render view to see how that looks. And then what I'm gonna do, take my camera right here, control alt zero, snap it to view. And then in the camera settings, I'm gonna go to an orthographic view and then see how that looks in the render. Of course, gotta get my lights in. So this is looking really, really cool. What I'm gonna do just to, uh, I'm gonna bring my orthographic scale in some, just like this. Oops, did too much. So I gotta go farther out. This is a really, really cool way to make some very simple but really striking wallpapers. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit this drop down, go back to the default scene world, scene lights, and I'm going to get in an environment texture. And I'm gonna open up just a HDR from HDRI Haven, so right here and then it pops that in there, and then we'll go back to shading, and I want to, and I'm just gonna remove this purple one, not a fan of that, I like how it looks just with this sort of monochrome, and then I can bring in the black a little bit. So, we have this, I'll bring up my scale a little bit to 0 0.6, and that looks really, really cool. We'll go back to layout, see how that looks, and then we'll just render it, of course, remembering that your subdivision is at five. I think that looks the best, but it all depends on what your computer can handle. So don't crash your computer, of course, save your file and then render, render image, and see how that looks. And the render is finished. This looks super, super cool. You can sell this as a wallpaper asset, anything like that. It's really useful. I'll probably be putting this as my wallpaper in a little bit. And there you go. The only issue I found with this note is you can see these kind of colors are overlapping in spots where it displaces. I'm not totally sure why it does that. Personally, I kind of like it. It looks really stylized, but that's not intentional stylizing, so you don't have control over that. If anybody knows why it's doing that, let me know in the comments. I'll be sure to pin that to the top. Other than that, that's how you make these really cool little map range things. And there you go. Thanks for watching.